Good evening, glad to be back with you on Wednesday night after spring break. I know that uh, uh, you're probably glad to be back yourself. So on Wednesday nights, we've been walking through uh, what Jesus demands uh, from the world. And this week, uh, the new demand that we're going to look at is one that uh, most of us are familiar with, right? Um, a scribe came up to Jesus and asked him, uh, what is the most important commandment in the law? And to that, he replied in Mark chapter 12, you can show the slide. Mark chapter 12, um, beginning in verse 28. So the question, what commandment is the foremost of all? And Jesus answered, and he does this by quoting uh, in Deuteronomy. Uh, the foremost is, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. Two other quick verses that point us to the demand for love of God. In Luke 11, verse 42, but woe to you, this is Jesus speaking, but woe to you, Pharisees, for you pay a tithe of mint uh, and rue and every kind of garden herb, and yet you disregard justice and the love of God. How could you disregard the love of God? And then we see uh, in John chapter 5, verses 42 and 43, uh, Jesus again speaking to those who are rejecting him. Um, He says, but I know you and that you do not have the love of God in yourselves. I have come in my Father's name and you do not receive me. All right, so back to this command, right? The the overall command from Jesus, the demand that you love God with all of your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Now, I need to admit to you up front, uh, I don't know if it's in every culture, but especially in our culture, I get overwhelmed by the use of the word love, and it loses all meaning because of it, right? So we can say, I love tacos, and I love the Dallas Cowboys, and I love um, a Ferrari sports car, and it can have, and I love my wife, and I love my kids, and it can have such a wide array of meanings that it loses all meaning. So, Uh, With that, um, I'm going to say a few things to to help us think about love and this command of love. For Jesus commands us, he demands that we love God with all of our heart, mind, soul, mind, and strength, okay? So first we would say, there is no love without knowing, okay? There is no love without knowing. Okay? You cannot strategically and rightly or well think about loving God and not knowing God. Otherwise, you are actually just loving God in your own image, okay? in whatever form that you have created, and you have a pseudo, pseudo idea of what love is. Here's an example. Uh, Paul writes in Romans 10, verse 2, he says, look, I confess that the Jews have a lot of zeal for God, but they don't know, okay? So you can be religious and you can have a lot of stuff and a lot of zeal, but you do not love. In fact, this is why, uh, again, Paul in Ephesians chapter one, uh, one of the, the most prominent prayers in the New Testament, if you look at what he says, this is, this is his prayer. He says, I constantly pray for you. And then in verse 17, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and of revelation in the knowledge of him. Simply put, what's he praying? I pray that you would know God. You see, you, you cannot love God without knowing him. And then secondly, we must recognize that Jesus is the one who reveals God, okay? That Jesus so deeply reveals God that receiving Jesus becomes the test for loving God, okay? Look at this verse, John 8, 42. Jesus said to them, if God were your father, you would love me. 
Okay, so Jesus is the ultimate revelation, and you have to know God in order to love God. All right, now with that idea, I want to take your mind into, uh, there, are, there are stages of love, and uh, I want you to think in regards to um, a spousal relationship and kind of levels of love. The first one, you can put the slide up. The first one we would call is, that's like the honeymoon phase, all right? Um, it is real. There is a real love that is there, um, but the other person is barely known, okay? And so it's all feeling. It's easy. That's that honeymoon phase. Um, and I would say you're more in love with the idea of love during that phase, but then reality hits, okay? Circumstances and reality hits, and that usually comes crashing to a halt. It usually ends up in a crisis of relationship. Um, you've, you've moved past that, uh, I guess we're just soulmates, we're just destined for each other phase, and then you just run into this roadblock, and then you work through like, no, no love is a choice, I will choose to love you even if I don't like you. I will act like I love you with my choices even when I don't like you, right? And then there's that saying, right? Fake it until you make it. But then there is a third level of love, right? And I'm gonna call this the oneness, the unity, okay? And this love is based off of delight. You actually, after making those choices, you can actually lead your heart to knowing the other person. And then there's delight. There is a oneness that's achieved. Deep emotions. Why? Because at this point, like, I know you. Okay, I know you, I see you, warts and all, I see all of you, and I love you, and we work through that, right? Now, I want you to focus for a second on that second one, okay? Love is a choice or a duty. Because when we ask the question, um, when you begin to ask the question, uh, how do works and acts of duty fit into the Christian life? Real quick, quickly, like we know if, if you have no works in the Christian life, you, you don't have love, okay? Um, no works, James 2 says, right, faith without works is dead. And 1 John would say like, like, if you do not love your neighbor whom you can see, you don't love God whom you can't see. So there has to be works, right? But Here's what I, focusing on that second one, here's what I want you to, to realize. The love that Jesus commands is not, is not uh, a command of duty. I think you're supposed to go back one. Maybe not. All right. What happens in the heart is essential. Okay. Remember uh, Jesus, again, looking at the Pharisees. He says, these people honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. But in vain do they worship me. Okay? You see, the heart is essential. Jesus does not want that second category of love that is only duty where the heart does not follow. In fact, in 1 Corinthians 13, Paul even says this. He says, if I give all of my possessions to feed the poor and I surrender my body to be burned, but I do not have love, it profits me nothing. He said, if I do everything out of duty, but the heart isn't there if there is not love. So it is possible to do all of that out of duty, but the heart not be engaged. He says it actually profits us nothing. In other words, the, so as we look at this, right, the heart, that, the love that Jesus commands is that third category of love. That is heartfelt affection. So again, back to Mark 12. 
What commandment is first and foremost of all? Jesus answered, the foremost is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God is one, and that you shall love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all of your soul, with all of your mind, and with all of your strength. Jesus commands this, okay? So as we read that, um, I don't have time to go into it, but it, it seems what's going on here is that the heart is actually the source of love, that it's that connection, this heartfelt affection that is demanded of us. And then our soul is a reference to the whole of you. Your mind is your thinking capacity. And your strength is your capacity to make vigorous efforts. And all of those in overlapping fashion are a command, right, that all of you, in all of your capacity, in all of your faculty, is called to love God to love God. And again, so if I told you to love country music and you don't love country music, you can't just command your heart to love country music. You can't go, all right, well, now I'm gonna do it. I'm just gonna love country music. Now, actually, the only way to fall in love with something like country music is as you listen to it, You have to develop an appreciation and an affection and a fondness for it, okay? That's that's what is called upon here. And, And it's called with all that is you to love God and then to demonstrate that love. And Jesus demands this of us. This is the demand. You must love God with all of you, him as your all-consuming treasure, that he is the treasure above all other treasures, such that our treasuring of any other thing is only right whenever it is also a treasuring of God. You understand that our treasuring of any other thing is only right whenever we see it as an extension of God himself. So in any of our money or our material possessions, we must see them as good gifts from him. Or that we have given those resources as stewardships for his kingdom. Any treasure must be viewed through uh, the lens of it points us to the ultimate treasure. And we do not treasure anything in place of him. Only as expressions of treasuring him. That's what it means to love God with all of your heart heart, with all of your soul, with all of your mind, and with all of your strength. And just to close with a few psalms that just radiate this entire idea. Listen to the psalmist when he writes, whom have I in heaven but you? And besides you, I desire nothing on earth. There is nothing all the earth that I desire, God, besides you. Psalm 16, I said to the Lord, you are my Lord, and I have no good besides you. And you will make uh, known to me the path of life, and in your presence is fullness of joy. And in your right hand there are pleasures forevermore. And then to close on Psalm 43, verse 4, the psalmist David says, and then I will go to the altar of God, to God my exceeding joy, that you are my joy of all joys. You are my exceeding joy. You are my delight. You are the lover of my soul. Okay, this is what it means with all of you, right? With all your mind, okay? That means you think well and right about knowing God and his characteristics. 
with all of your soul, that means every faculty, the whole of your being, with all of your strength, that is you willingly, you know that you have the ability to express yourself and to express your love for him in all things. Will you pray with me? Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for this call, this demand from King Jesus. And we thank you because that which you command, you supply. Through your son, you have given us a new heart. And through your Holy Spirit, you have provided the ability for us to love you and to delight in you and, and, and to participate in this so that we can do it more and more and more. That's why you command it, so that we can abide in you and so that we can use our strength and our mind and all of our faculty to love you and to express that to a lost world that needs to know you. Help us to be obedient to that command and to find you, to find you our eternal delight. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.